All right, let's talk about uh, some three-dimensional figures. Um, <clears throat> finish off this this chapter here. The uh, uh, <clears throat> we've been talking a lot about two-dimensional squares, rectangles, circles. Well, now we're going to jump into the three D realms here. Talk about some three-dimensional figures. So uh, uh, let's just think first of all what kind of shapes we're talking about. I guess the most basic three-dimensional figure uh, would be talking about the uh, box. <clears throat> three-dimensional rectangle, I guess, if you will. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, these figures that we'll, we'll have uh, now, and this is the attempt here to draw that because, yeah, you've got uh, three dimensions. you got uh, length, width, and height to it there, so uh, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about some different types of three-dimensional figures. One uh, other, uh, maybe you're thinking about, <clears throat> how about uh, a cylinder? We'll, uh, we'll deal some with those. Uh, can shape, um, cones, we'll do a cone. A little bit on it. Uh, <clears throat> let me also focus a little more here on uh, a couple others. <clears throat> the pyramid. Another shape that two we'll talk about. On uh, pyramids, you know, we usually think when we're thinking pyramids, we're thinking. Uh, the Great Pyramids, the uh, pyramids over in Egypt there, which <clears throat> that's that is a good uh, good example of uh, of pyramids. But <clears throat> the thing about pyramids is the the base can uh, can change up. Um, it. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, the shape of the pyramid. Of course, you always have the triangles for the sides. But <clears throat> um, yeah, in the Great Pyramids, uh, in that example, we've got a square base. But um, you can also have really any polygon can be the base to a pyramid. Um, <clears throat> we could just have uh, there a, like a triangular base where instead of you know, having that square, just that base is just a, a, a triangle. And so you just have the three sides around there instead of the four. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So on pyramids, you you have, uh, have it where you can change it up. Also, kind of on a related note, um, Let me talk just briefly here about prisms. Prisms is the same uh, sort of thing. Of course, on a prism, <clears throat> probably most uh, most of us would think uh, the triangular prism, where the top and the bottom is uh, a triangle. Triangle, <clears throat> but just like on pyramids, that that can change for prisms too. You can have any polygon be the top and bottom of uh, a prism. Um, easy one, relatively easy one to draw is uh, like this shape here where <clears throat> yeah the kind of have to visualize a little bit but <clears throat> yeah the top and the bottom trying to draw a trapezoid for the top and the bottom there. Um, <clears throat> that is another possibility for a prism. You can have a hexagon be the top and the bottom of the prism. You can have a dodecagon be the top and bottom of the prism. Yeah, any polygon could be uh, possibly your your top and your bottom of your prism. So anyway, that's some of the shapes. We'll, we've got a few more, but those are some of the basic ones. 
Now, um, <clears throat> two things that we'll talk about when we measure, take, we want to measure on a box uh, and cylinder and the three dimensional figures there. One thing you want to know or can possibly calculate is how much each one holds. What is the volume of these things? So volume is one aspect that uh, that we'll talk about for three-dimensional figures. And the other um, capacity, <clears throat> let's just say how much it'll hold. And then we'll also talk about the surface area. And that is so-called because it's just... Uh, as, as it sounds there, it's the uh, total area of the surfaces, of all the surfaces. <clears throat> yeah, we just take, like on the box, we take the front and the back, the area of that, the two sides, the area of that, add those all together, then the uh, top and the bottom, add that to it. Just add the areas of all the surfaces uh, together the surface area for obviously good reason. All right, <clears throat> so um, now let me mention here too uh, the the units. Go into that for just a second. <clears throat> on uh, on volume, let's think about that for just a second. I'm trying to fill up, you know, the box, the uh, uh, the cylinder. I'm trying to figure out how much it'll hold. Well, I can't do that with, uh, of course, just inches. Inches won't tell me, you know, volume. Can't do it with uh, with a square inch. No, what I have to do <coughs> on the units for volume is I have to take a one inch, say, inch is my um, unit here, one inch by one inch. And then I have to do uh, the third dimension also one inch. So it's one inch long, one inch wide, one inch tall. That one over there. Unit. <clears throat> an inch by inch by inch. So I have to do an inch cubed for my units. Uh, I'm doing inches anyway. Yeah, the units for volume are cubic units. I have to figure out how many of these uh, cubic little cubes would fit into, say, the, the bigger box, um, <clears throat> or how many would fit into the any shape, cylinder, cone, py pyramid, whatever it is. I want to figure out how many of these little cubes I could fit into each one of those figures. So the units would be cubic units. Inches cubed is one, um, meters cubed, feet cubed. Uh, cubic yards depends on the size of your object what you want to use for the units okay now <clears throat> just for mentioning uh, go ahead and mention also to the surface area well keyword there is area and so the units for the surface area are just like area units that we've encountered uh, before <clears throat> What units did we use for area before? We used square units, so same thing for surface area. Surface area will be measured in square units. How many of the one by one squares uh, will fit into various shapes? Okay, so that's uh, intro into our three dimensional figures. Those are the two things that, for a lot of these, we'll measure. We won't uh, actually do surface area on some of these, but let's talk about some formulas. <clears throat> Three-dimensional volume surface area formulas. Okay, uh, yeah, let's just start, start here with the basic one, the box. Three things you do need to know when you 
talk about a box. Now, we <coughs> will need to know the length, the width, and the height for a box. Um, <coughs> for volume, well, let me just draw uh, an example here. Let's say we've got a four long box, four inches long box. All right, then it's going to be three, two units wide, two inches wide, and then three, one, two, three inches wide, uh, high. Okay? All right, so there it is. <coughs> four length, two width, and three is the height. All right, well, <coughs> just like I did with uh, the rectangle, let's, uh, let's grid the box off. All right, so there's those, and then I'm going to do some lines there for the height, and then for the width. All right, then I'm going to come across here like so, and then I'll we'll need to go across here too, don't I? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so doing that, what uh, what I've done is I've grid, put the grid on there, and now these show how many of the cubic units because each of those little uh, blocks there is one by one by one. That's one inch, that's one inch, and then it's wide one inch. So it's one inch long, one inch high, and one inch wide. So I'm showing the uh, cubic how many cubic inches I have there. If you think about it, I've got a front row and a back row. On the front row, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of them. And of course, on the back, I would have 12 of them. So that's 12 and 12, 24. So I've got 24 cubic inches, which of course is uh, the volume. This box holds 24 of those cubic inches. Now, if you look at it, I've got the uh, dimensions 4, 2, and 3. And is there any way to get 24 out of 4 and 2 and 3? Well, of course, multiply those three things together. 4 times 2 times 3, you got 24. Yeah, if you take the length times the width times the height, this gives you your volume of your cube. So it's pretty pretty nice for volume of a box. Volume for a box is length times the width times the height. Okay? All right. Now, <clears throat> surface area. Surface area will denote with an S. So let's talk about surface area for this box. Like we said, surface area is just an measurement of the area of all surfaces. How many surfaces do I have for a box? Well, for a box, let's see, I've got, <clears throat> let me put some more lines in here. Let's do dotted for hidden ones, okay. This, all right, <clears throat> so let's count up the, the surfaces I have. I've got a front and I've got the back. I've got the two sides, that's four, and then the front and the top. I mean the top and the bottom. That's six. Six sides all together. So I just come up with the uh, area of each of those and add them together. Now, for the front, I've got the length and the height. So the area of that would be LH, right? Well, it just so happens I have an LH in the back, too. So don't I have two LH? Two LHs for the sides. Well, the sides are rectangles. They're WHs. So this area to the side is WH, and then I've got the left side that would be WH. So I've got two WHs, and then that leaves the top and the bottom. Well, the top that's L, and that's W. So I've got that's LW, and then I've got another one on the bottom, so I've got also two LWs. Surface area, yeah, surface area of a box is 
this formula right here. <clears throat> okay? Um, so it's basically you multiplying each dimension by the other dimension, multiplying it by two. So up here, uh, surface area, well, I take uh, two times, uh, uh, be four times three, so that'd be two times 12, and then, uh, then I do two times the width and height, so that'd be two times, two times three is six, so I'd have two sixes, and then <clears throat> two times the length and the width, the length is four, the width is two, so it'd be two times eight. Two times 12 is 24, two times six is 12, 16, so that would be surface area of this one, 36 and 16 is 52. Square inches, <clears throat> yes, yeah, area is always inches squared. Square, whatever units it is. All right. <clears throat> so that's one example. Now, I do like to change it up a little bit. I like this problem uh, <clears throat> for a box, and you can do this for a lot of these, but um, <clears throat> let me give you another example here. Let's say we had a box with no top, as shown here. I'll show you. So this box has no top on it. <clears throat> All right, so we've got, uh, let's say it's eight, uh, eight feet by three feet by five feet. But it doesn't have a box. I mean, it doesn't have a top. Okay, so the top's not there. It just has the other. It has a it does have the bottom and the sides and all that. But okay, <clears throat> volume-wise, that would be well. It'd still be length times width times height. Eight times three times five. No problem there. That would be twenty-four times five. Uh, how much is that? Make sure I get it right here. All right, 24 times 5 is 120. Okay, and that would be cubic units. <clears throat> yes, but let's talk the surface area. I like this problem because, yeah, it makes you think about the, uh, the actual formula there. Now, in this case, since I'm missing the top, how many uh, surfaces do I actually have? I'd, I usually have six, but since I don't have a top, there's only five. So you've got to factor that in. <clears throat> what does that mean? Well, what that means is um, when I go to my formula, you know, it's usually two times the length times width, two, so forth and so on. <clears throat> well, let's think about it. I do have, let's think about the front and the back. I've got two in their... Uh, the front and the back is eight by fives, right? This is five, that, so that front would be eight by five, and then I've got a, so I've got two eight by fives. Sides, well, I've got two of those, so I've got two three by fives. But when I go to top and bottom, there's no top, so there's no top. So I've got the bottom is eight by three. So I don't have the top, so I only have one of those. So yeah, what it means is instead of two of those, there's only one of those, okay? So I like that problem just so you think about what, what you're actually doing there. All right, so that's two times, that'd be 40, so it'd be 80. Two times 15, so that would be uh, 30. And one times 24. So that winds up being all together surface area, 134. And units for surface area is the same as all area. Units, feet squared, or your square feet. All right. <clears throat> so anyway, I like that uh, little problem there. Okay, but well, let's talk more, uh, more about some other formulas. Let's go to the cube here next. <clears throat> 